takeaway tips that can help you spot a cheater before you even get involved with him. Please welcome, oh yes, please welcome relationship expert and author of The 30 Day Love Detox. Cleanse yourself of bad boys, cheaters, and men who won't commit and find a real relationship. Dr. Wendy Walsh. Welcome. All right, let's get started. Your very first tip to avoiding a cheater is you say when you meet someone that initial meeting, look at that person's intentions. That's right, and I should say ahead of time that these rules kind of apply for heterosexual couples, gay couples, but in terms of what I'm gonna, the language I'm gonna use today are mostly gonna be personality types of people who cheat. You'll hear me say he a lot, but it may be a girl, you never know. Okay, so you're gonna look at that person's intentions. Research has shown that people who are not faithful tend to be emotionally avoidant. They don't, they dance around the tender topics. They don't want to talk about family and closeness and their feelings. They want to extract sex and move on, or they want to have multiple relationships where they never actually have to get too close to anyone. Ooh, good tip. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you also say to look at your date's social behavior. So how does that help you tell if they're going to cheat? Okay, so research has also shown that one of the things that keeps people monogamous actually is a healthy sense of guilt. They don't want to betray their lover. <laughs> they don't want to hurt someone's feelings, right? So when you're out on a date with somebody and they're not showing a lot of empathy or compassion for other people around, they're being rude to the waiter, they're maybe not tipping them well, they're littering on the street and figuring the city can pick up after them, they're talking about how they cheat on their tax returns, this is somebody who doesn't carry a lot of guilt. <laughs> That's called a creep. That's a creep. That's yeah, right. That... So watch out for that if they're not showing compassion enough. Like, I don't want to date that person anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't know, some of these young women, you know, this guy could be wealthy and gorgeous or have a great six-pack and they just decide that oh, they'll yeah, well, overlook that those case. things. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. A lot of people <laughs> yeah. are, are weak when they, they look good and they yeah. forget about, you know. Okay, exactly. well, uh, the next one we've heard before, but remind us all why you say to look for someone with strong moral values. Okay, well, today only one in five Americans attend church regularly, but plenty of people were raised with some religion. No matter what religion you were raised with, they all teach the same rule, which is basically basically the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. So it's a good sign if he was raised with some, he or she was raised with some kind of religion. It means that somewhere deep in their soul, in their blood and in their bones, there's some early life moral programming and that can be helpful. Okay, and then you also say, which I think is really interesting, that education level can have something to do with whether someone cheats or not. Now this research was fascinating to me. Did you know the higher a guy's IQ and the more educated he is, the more likely he is to be monogamous. Now think about it. Why do we drive by junk food restaurants when we would prefer to stop for our sugar, salt, and fat because our body's having an urge to get that? Because we make an intellectual decision. So when somebody drives by a sexual opportunity, knowing there are consequences that it's not good for them, it's because they've made an intellectual decision. Now, we think that college campuses these days are hot beds of sex. In fact, 25% of college students are still virgins. And by the way, they, yes, they quote religion as the third most, the third most important reason. Most important reasons they quote virginity are because they don't want to uh, waylay their chances for more education or a better career and, you know, pregnancy, STD, those are complications. Good, so. good. I like hearing that. <laughs> All right, and you say um, a person's behavior in the bedroom can also determine if this person is going to be faithful. And you say avoid people with sexual anxiety Okay, issues. now this works this is kind of a backward thing you would think the big macho guys with the sexual bravado who are very sexually confident would want to share it with the world <laughs> no those guys are perfectly fine being monogamous the ones that have sexual anxiety think to themselves well it doesn't really work with her maybe I should try it with somebody else maybe the partners the problem you see Wow. Or they might try to feel better yeah, about themselves. They might try to feel better yeah. about themselves by watering down the milk and spreading the seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we come back, Dr. Wendy tells us why we should pay close attention to a man's paycheck. Stay right there. For tickets to be in our studio audience, visit us at thetalk.com. Dr. Wendy Walsh, who can help you spot a cheater before you get involved with him. Now, here is your final tip. You say to pay close attention to a potential partner's income. 
Okay, now we're at a time in America where we're seeing an unprecedented economic rise of women. In fact, women in the age 30, 22 to 32 demographic are making more money than their male peers. Mm -hmm. Plenty of really expensive men got laid off in the recession and lots of wives are supporting families. And what the research is showing is that if a guy makes way less money, I'm not talking about 10 or 20% less, way less money than his wife, he's more likely to cheat because <gasps> it's about self-esteem at that point. Men love to self-identify by being the provider, and when they can't be the provider, they want to, you know, raise their self-esteem somehow. They, their sexual prowess is important to them. Does, it does make it sense, does right? It does make sense, yeah. On the other hand, if a guy makes way more than his wife, uh, again, not 10 or 20%, 80% more, then he's more likely to cheat because he may have the sense of entitlement. Mm. He may be a power guy who made a lot of money so that he can have like access a, like to a more women. a small range in there that you should... Couples do better when they make around the same. <laughs> Dr. Wendy's book, The 30 Day Love Detox, is available in stores, and everyone in our studio audience is going home with a copy of her book. For your chance to win the book at home, and for more information on her relationship tips, go to thetalk.com. A big thank you to Cameron Matheson for co-hosting with us. Thank you for joining us today. And remember, it's always the right time to have... <laughs>